welcome to a very special edition of what I'm going to class as a Rocker Report Extra podcast. You didn't get a preview this week. Um, that one kind of got canned. But what you do have is a very special podcast with uh, a player and a former player, a legend at that, Mr. Lorik Sana. How are you doing, Lorik? Are you well? Very good. Thank you. Like, like freshly retired, <laughs> but I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, you, you are quite freshly retired. It only seems like yesterday you were playing for us, though. Does it feel like that for you, too? Yeah, it definitely does. It definitely does. It's, not, it's, it's been like a little bit more than two years. But I, I still feel like I was playing yesterday. Uh, and it's, you know, when you're, when, you're being, when you're being for such a long time active on the pitch and, and like playing all the time and focus on football, and which is our... Our main passion and love, and 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 you have now to just to prepare the after after football and the next career. It's not easy, but I'm I'm getting used to it. Spending a little bit more time with family and and being involved in something else. But you miss you miss football a lot. Trust me. Yeah, you miss the uh, the daily routine, shall we say? Of course, especially being you know you were captain at a lot of clubs. I suppose you would have had a lot of time prepping games more than just as being a player prepping a team as well you know yeah of course of course but the most mo- most of most of all you miss you miss the game like when people when people ask me uh, what do you miss most um, for sure you miss uh, your your teammates you miss the pitch and you miss all the preparation and you miss all the the training ground and you miss all the travels and the trips and everything uh, what is what is football the modern football actually? But what you you miss most is that feeling you have in your in your in your belly in your stomach just before coming in the pitch and the preparation and then when you are in the pitch the the emotions and the adrenaline you have uh, you cannot you cannot find that again anymore and, and I think that's the most difficult part and of being retired to be honest. Yeah, because it has been weirdly 10 years since, well, almost 10 years since you left the club. We asked a few fans, I've got some of my own questions, but we asked a few fans, you know, if they had questions as well. And one that came in that made me laugh, and I asked you a little bit earlier, but is it true that you can slam a revolving door? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you asked asked me already (laughs) once, and... uh... And the answer is always the same. Uh, trying not to have limits, it might be it might be a strength, but it might be a weakness too. But the but I always say like the main strength of someone is always what you what what you th- you think you can reach, and even you think it's too it's too difficult, you're still trying to keep to keep going forward and trying to reach that target, and that co- doesn't come from. From the strengths only about your your physical strength. It comes from your your mind and your heart, and that is the most this is the the, the most difficult. And try to not put limits to yourself. Of course, you have to try to be a little bit realistic in some in some parts, which is a kind of way to be smart and not to and not to be stupid. But when you try to 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 reach some goals. Especially in performance and sports, and uh, your your mind and your heart makes makes the difference. And um, and I think this is why being part of uh, of the English football and being part of Sunderland, which that mentality completely match to what we are used to the northeast and what can how people are actually formed and what they are st- what they stand for. I think the, I I found myself in the in the perfect place and I. I never, to be honest, I played in many clubs and in many leagues. But the way I, the way I played in England and the way I, I, I stand out, uh, a part of Marseille, which I was fan of the club and really fighting because that was my club. And you know, when you when you grew up with a club, the love from a club when you and in one day you realize that dream, like playing for Olympic Marseille as a kid that was supporting and being able to play for the club and being able to become the club captain of Marseille, it was very special. But after Marseille, playing for Sunderland in that league, particularly in that place, when I was 
actually fighting for every ball. I, I was feeling like every su every supporter, every fan of the Black Cats, every fan of Sunderland was like challenging the, the ball with me. And it was a special feeling. I never felt something like that before. You spoke about um, the area, Sunderland as a place, and, and how you were as a, a player. I think what you've just described, everyone really could see that, that you, you did play with heart. You had a lot of talent as well, but the heart was really what... I think our fans loved about you and I think a lot of you know we, we know a little bit about your history and your upbringing I think I, I could be wrong here but I understand you moved from Kosovo at quite a young age during sort mm. of the, the war um, and you settled in, in Switzerland but how does that experience as a you know as a youngster as a young child influence your footballing development? Well I, I think a lot a lot uh, you know I, I, I might have I might have already said a little bit about my past when I was uh, at that time in Sunderland about my, my own experience. I'm not the only one, like many many people, especially now. It's part of the of the news uh, about every a lot of conflicts going on in in many parts of the world. Um, at that time, it was in the Balkans, and I came from a part of the world when it was the time of war and conflicts and and like many of our or our fellow albanians we left we left our country we didn't we didn't choose to leave our country we left it because we couldn't we couldn't stay like it was it was not the the right place to stay and we were looking for a better we were looking for a better future and a better situation and um i never really chose to become a football player my dad was a former football player and he actually he actually made he made the decision for me he was lucky because i was i was passionate and i, I loved football and i had a little i had a little bit of quality too and um, and i tried and, and i tried to to follow his steps and it, and it went and it went pretty in pretty well and to be honest if i if i if i stayed in my in kosovo I don't think I would have the same career because I would have been in a place when many, like many Albanians, uh, grew up, which were as good as I, I was, maybe better, and didn't have that opportunity. So I was in Switzerland in a place when you have good facilities, you had good good coaches, and if you have a little bit quality. And at that time, started the in uh, in the late 90s, started the the second conflict and the, the big war in Kosovo when when actually our our, our our fellow Albanians were were touched with the conflict and uh, and uh, and and that time uh, and that time you were not thinking about football a lot. Well, you were you were just thinking about how is your family doing and if they are okay, if they are safe. But in another part, it makes you it makes you very strong because you feel a kind of res responsibility and you feel a kind of. Uh, you have a you have something to reach to to help them and um, and then you start you start to fight and 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 you see football as an opportunity not just to do well for yourself but try to do well with your family and try to do and try to help your family back back in kosovo as well and um, and i think that was a that was a that was a part which actually forged my personality and and made me become the the, the person uh, as I I became. I'm trying to always to say the person because the the player is just the image of the person you are, yeah. and exactly the person I was outside the pitch, I was exactly the same person in, in the pitch. Maybe fighting for for which I was standing for, and when I was putting a jersey on, I was playing for. An identity. I was playing with some some people. I I felt I have a responsibility for them, and I am trying to do the as best as I can my duty. And for sure, in in like hard work, I was always trying to do in and in and outside the pitch. That part of the history of my of my country and that part of 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 time and conflict my 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 nation has and my family has and definitely became a, a very a very strong part of of my of my of my personality for sure you know everything you've just described there is completely what a lot of Sunderland fans connected with um i think you as a person you as a player was a really good fit for the northeast but i'm 
I'm lucky enough to remember when you first signed for the club and it felt like a step up, like you, you had presence, you had a reputation, you had that class that many fans hadn't seen for a while. And it was around that time when you could watch a YouTube video and you could get excited about a certain player and watch things like that. But what was it that convinced you that Sunderland was the right place to leave Marseille for? Why Sunderland? Why not elsewhere at that point in your career? Well, that's a pretty good question. Uh, mm, you know, like I left, I, I left the club now in 2010. It's been like more than eight years, and in half, eight and a half years, I left the club. Um, and you know, when when you when you look when you look behind you and you you see in your world career, I can already all, like I can only be only be grateful in what I. I I I experienced and what I have and the impact and everything what I, I I left behind me in every club when I went like for sure everything was was not great anywhere but every time when I I I step somewhere and I left I always try to 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 leave the best image as I could and uh, to someone which which was really involved and trying to do his best to 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 play for the club and. Uh, at that time, um, when I when I were I was choosing like what to do on that on that period in back in two thousand and and nine uh, in summer two thousand and nine, uh, I already choose like it was about it was time for me to leave Marseille. I was uh, I was playing many years in in Paris Saint Germain, Olympic Marseille, and um, at that time the the president of the club left. In Marseille, the coach left in Marseille, and I gave my word to them. Like if they if they were leaving, I would I would leave too. It was it was it was something that we were doing together. Yeah. So um, at that period, I had uh, I had offers to go and play in Germany, and I was nearly closing on Germany, and uh, it didn't happen. And then I had I had some opportunities in in the UK. I had Arsene Wenger, I had Arsene Wenger being interested into, and uh, he was like waiting to see what he's gonna do. Uh, I had Everton uh, with Moyes, and uh, I had Sunderland. And uh, actually, what made the difference? I knew that the club as a as an entity. I knew the club as 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 a history. And I knew the club wasn't wasn't doing so well for many years and going down and going up and, but uh, uh, I had uh, the opportunity to meet uh, at that time uh, the new manager, which was Steve Bruce, and um, he was like explaining to me how big is that club, and actually what 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 they want to do and what they want to bring me in, and. Um, it was very important for me not just to come, which is still uh, back then, but it's still the best league in the world. But going somewhere where actually uh, I can I can I can see myself in the values and how 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 I can play every every week in in a place when people are like always behind and fighting and and being a lot of support with the club and. For sure, it wasn't it wasn't as attractive as a club as as Arsenal were because at that time I think if Arsene Wenger would have pushed a little bit more or going a bit further, I would have go to Arsenal. But after when I was like trying to see what was the best solution for me with the coach and seeing me as an important part of the club, I choose to come to Sunderland, and I think uh, I think I'm, I'm I'm very pleased and I'm very proud I did it. Yeah, so are we. Um, <laughs> with um, with that season as well, like one thing you you may not remember because obviously it was more of a conversation the fan base had, but we really spoke about um, how we needed to toughen up the midfield. We needed stronger players, someone who could put a tackle in. And, and not only did we get one, we got kind of like two people who can, for want of a, a better phrase, yeah. put, put a tackle in, um, yourself and Lee Catamore. How much did you enjoy playing with Lee Caramo? Oh, a lot, a lot. I seriously, I seriously enjoyed a lot. Um, not only with Cats, I think with with the whole team, 
you know, when, when you approach football, there is no, there is no best way to think football. There is no best way to have an approach on football. Important is when you have a way to think of football, like every, everybody's focus on that way and everybody's focus on, the, um, on that kind of tactics, let's say. And we were like very, uh, very prepared to play the football in, in one way, playing, playing very, very quick, putting a lot of pressure on the opponent, trying to, uh, to be very compact as a team, trying to, to fight on every ball, trying to bring the, the danger as quick as possible in the box of the opponent. It was a very like, kind of English way to, to think football and to, and to play football. Yeah. Um, but you have to do that like, if everybody is focused in that way. The coach was, was seeing football in that way and he absolutely prepared his team to play in that way. And when we were most of the team fit, and everybody was everybody was like uh, in a good in a good um, like uh, say condition, we were I think one of the best seven eight teams in the in the Premier League definitely. And I think we we showed that. Uh, the, the problem is like we didn't have a team of uh, twenty players or twenty two players being able to play that way for the wall the wall league at the wall time and 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 that's why i think we didn't reach that top 7 top 8 that we could have potentially because having a players like Darren Band and Kieran Richardson and and uh, and 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 Cattermole and and we have a fantastic goalkeeper Craig Gordon and we have of course unfortunately we lost him Martin Phillip which was uh, uh, not only a number 2 but uh, when we when we when we heard about his uh, uh, his death, and we, I was very 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 sad. He was an amazing 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 guy, amazing person. We had uh, Jordan Anderson starting, uh, uh, Steve Malbronk, uh, we 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 Ken Kinwan Jones. I think we had a very 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 good team. Definitely being able to play in the top eight at that time, which for sure is never easy in, in the Premier League. We lost during the year many players. I think the problem was like we didn't have 20 players in the same level. Uh, but at that time, when we, we had like t- these top 11, top 14 players fit and ready to play, and especially with me and Katz in, in, in the mid, middle field, was, uh, was like for the opponent, it was, I think... A tough game to play it <laughs> yeah no i agree i think um you know and we showed it a lot at the i spoke to bolo zenden a few weeks ago and, and he he echoed the exact same sort of sentiment about he he didn't feel it was any particular reason that we didn't reach europe it was just a case of our strength and depth wasn't wasn't as great but you know when we had 11 players on the pitch and it was the first team and it was yourself and it was cats and it was Darren Bent and Kenny yeah. Jones um we 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 could match anyone and i think you know we have to speak about that liverpool game because people remember it for the beach ball but every sunderland fan remembers it for lorexana because you were just unstoppable that day what what are your personal memories of that? Because you just nothing was getting past you that day. Did you feel superhuman or something? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I didn't feel superhuman. I just uh, that days when actually you, f- you feel in the best physical conditions and your the team is playing well and uh, and you see. I remember I played the first half in center midfield. Yeah. And um, to be honest, uh, I wasn't playing better than the rest of the team. But what makes that difference that day in in the second half, uh, Liverpool put a lot of pressure on us. And we were leading 1-0, as I remember. Yes, right. And um, I think I don't remember who injured in the center back, and I and and the coach put me in center back because I was playing that position uh, in national team and in Marseille, and I played it many years that position, which I I played for the rest of my career, most of the rest of like, my career after Sunderland. And uh, I remember like 
Liverpool was putting a lot of pressure on the, 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 the performance of the team was a little bit going down and I felt like kind of responsibility like just to raise my 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 performance and 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 trying to and trying to lead by example and everything everything went very well um i remember it could have been very much more easy because i think we lost two or three big opportunities with can one joes and darren band hitting the post yeah that, that could have been a little bit easier but uh, at the end it was a, it was an amazing an amazing win and um uh, we, I think we beat one zero Liverpool, and and I, it definitely was one of the of the best games of my careers. And and, and I remember the, I remember the, like the connection I had uh, with the uh, with the stadium and with the fans was like something magical. Yeah, I remember like every time you came for a header, just the entire crowd just like screaming behind you. It was like the most fun <laughs> looking back, but um, nothing was getting past you that day. It was, I think, anyone who was there that day will always remember that performance till till the day they die. It was just <laughs> it was just something about it. You were just so strong that day. There was just and and it was it was funny because you played most of the games in in midfield for us, but that day it was just. Anything that came into the box, your head was going to, it was going to match it. It was going to get rid of it and it was going to clear yeah. it. Was, yeah, um, it, was, it was quite a performance that uh, I, I remember almost every single bit of. I forget the rest of the game. I just remember all your clearances. But um, I remember after that, that there is a rumor, I, this could be wrong, but I heard that obviously you received man of the match uh, of the, for that game after the match. Um, and I heard that you made a speech afterwards, and, and Niall Quinn was almost in tears from it. I heard he's an emotional man, but is that is that true? Well, uh, <laughs> I um, uh, I remember like um, being man of the match. I remember going speaking to the to the fans in the stadium after the game, as uh, uh, as we did many times. Uh, and uh, now Queen, it always has been someone really, really close to the to the player and really close to the people and and really close exactly what what Sunderland uh, is always stood for, uh, like the relation and the history of the club and the love for for football and the passion of 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 of, of the city for for football. Um, in that particular game, to be honest, like I was all when I was speaking, I was always looking at the people. And for sure, the the president was probably standing next to me on a little bit on the back. So I, I to be honest, I, I I didn't really see what what his emotions <laughs> were. But I, even if he had if he had some emotion, were, were was probably more about making people of Sunderland happy and proud than just my singular performance. I what I think, to be honest. Maybe, maybe. Now, there's a couple of questions I wanted to just, whilst we're looking at the questions here from the, I think it was from Twitter, I think possibly. Um, but somebody asked, what did you think of the song that we sang for you as uh, our supporters? Our supporters. Do you remember the song? Mm, yeah, I remember the song. Good. It was a great but song. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the song was right. I, I remember the song after the second or the third game in the Stadium of Light. Yeah. Um, but I will I will tell you something. I um, I think I, I never shared I never shared to anyone. Um, we in the preseason when I just arrived. I think I, I arrived like late late July, like something like twenty fifth or twenty sixth. I don't remember. And we had we had the preseason, and I think one of the one of the first friendly game we had to play we went north before hearts we play in glasgow we play celtics in celtic park oh yeah yeah, yeah i remember yeah we won uh, two, we, two one, we won think. yeah two one richardson scored and uh, yeah. and um i remember i was just i just arrived in the club and uh we were working a lot of a lot of like a physical part and pre-seasons and um i just played the last uh, i think like the last 15 or 20 minutes it was my first time i played for, for with the jersey and with it with it with, with sunderland and I remember when I, uh, in the second half, when I actually started to warm up and uh, the warming book was next to the Sunderland fans. And actually, um, when I came like 
I had such a warm, it's not, I had such a boiling welcome when everybody was like shouting and like waiting something from me. When I came back in the bench, like just before coming in, the, 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 the assistant coach, Eric Black, was like uh, telling to me in French at that time, because Eric is, is sp speaks French very well, was like, whoa, that's a, that's a very warm welcome. And, like, and I said to Eric, like I said, don't be worried, my friend. I will give them back 100 times what they are waiting for. <laughs> and, uh, and I think uh, it, was, it was something amazing because for sure there were probably like, Knowing I, I play international football, I play Champions League, I play with Marseille and coming to the club, but the way they were welcome, the, the welcome I had, uh, this is one of the best best records I have from, from those fans and I already knew I'm going to have a great relation with them. And it turned out to be your only season in the Premier League, not, not just for Sunderland. And, and one person did ask, who was the toughest opponent that you came across during that period? Because there was a lot of good midfielders at that point. But uh, I felt you, I felt you give everyone a match. But who was who was the one that you remember being the most difficult to play against? Mm, well, that's a good question. I have to be honest with you. Um, when I was really feeling well, when I was really feeling well that year, physically, I mean, I had no tough opponents to be honest. <laughs> that's the answer that I wanted <laughs> <laughs> when I was a little bit more struggling and with the team was a little bit more struggling and physically when it's a little more difficult especially in January and February when I was struggling with my knee and uh, with my um, uh, with my hips with my hip too uh, but for sure you had some 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 great players playing against uh, uh, like Lampard and uh, and one part, of course, Gerard, and I played with them in Champions League two against. Um, that was the, the the main opponents that you you have on the pitch. Probably like Lampard and Gerard are are, are amazing. Oh, like yeah. well, they are different different league, and they are absolutely great, 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 great players. Um, after I had someone really tough, I really struggled, like even physically. But normally, like you put the ball in the air, and like you put like ten times the ball, nine nine of them, I'm gonna win them. Uh, there is one player I was like, like really struggling to 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 push him was Emileski. Like that, oh, really? that, that guy was so fucking tough. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that answer. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, like I remember that game against Villa. Actually, when I was sending, when I was sent off, like the only game I was sent off that year with two two yellow cards and I remember like I was trying to push Elmileski and he was like not moving at all <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great experience like the whole season was a great experience uh, it was and it's it, it's such a it, it seemed very weird when we we got when you agreed to do the interview and we got the interview because you're, you're so fondly remembered at Sunderland I think we kind of forget that you were only here for a year like and it's I don't, I don't know many players that have only been at a club for one year that I remembered almost in a, a cult-like status like you are. Um, but but why, why do you think that is? Why do you think you had such a connection with Sunderland and, and why do you think we bought into you so much? Well, you know, there is a, in football, there is, a, there, is a, there is the part in the pitch and out the pitch and what actually you, you the kind of the kind of um, feelings uh, you give to the people like football is a sport and it's the most famous sport in the world when you have like millions and hundreds of millions and billions of people like following it and they follow it about because they love it they have the passion of it and everyone is trying to recognize himself on his values what he sees on that sport and uh, i think like english fans sees football that's the place when actually football started <laughs> and uh, and they see it like in a way 
to to bring those values out uh not in everyday life but in uh, with the sport and i think uh, how sunderland fan lives and how they want to they want to live through their their values and their life and how they want their team to play they want their team to play with the same values which is giving everything like trying to to fight for every moment to bring forward the to bring forward the the the, the identity and trying to bring forward the club and and for that part of of the, of the country like most of the english fans are are the same they have the same passion for football but the northeast have that little bit more kind of fighting spirit part never like never abandon trying to trying always find a way to 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 go when you have some difficult parts and i think is the way i was playing football it doesn't mean I was playing better than other ones because you can show your qualities in different ways. But I think my my main strengths always remain my heart and my and my fighting spirit and I never abandon. I think the people of that part of the country were recognizing themselves and that was I was matching so much with them. No, I, I'd agree with you 100% on that, I think, because um, I remember, obviously, the, the season really well, and I think many of us who uh, will, will be listening to this remember it well as well, and I think, yeah, I think heart is definitely what we have as a fan base, and we definitely saw that in the way that you played, um, and I think it, it, it's a question I asked, but I think I kind of almost knew the answer anyway, um, just kind of wanted to wanted to hear it from you, you know? <laughs> yep. Gone. Gone. Um, but uh, working with Steve Bruce now, I'll, I'll be honest. I've I've interviewed a few players from that period. Um, yep. Not all of them have been particularly nice about him, but um, he gave you the captaincy. We had a really terrific start to the season. You came based on what what he said, uh, yep. as you said earlier. But how, when when we struggled, when we went on that fourteen game winless run. Yeah. Um, I think you got injured during that time as well. There was a game you had to go back to centre back. Um, yeah. we, we were having a poor time, but how was your relationship with Steve Bruce at the beginning and how was it during that difficult period? Well, I, I, <laughs> I, to be honest, Steve Bruce one was the main person which actually made me made it happen to come to Sunderland. Yeah. Uh, of course, I knew him as a as a as a former Man United player. I knew him as a as a as an important player. But to be honest, I had no actually idea what kind of coach he was, and uh, I had to meet him in person. And the first connection I had with him was was absolutely amazing leaving outside the technical part as a coach, but speaking about the human being side. And uh, and I made that connection with me straight away because I was like trying to see, going a little bit further, when you go and see what can be the good parts and what can be the difficult parts and trying to see what was the person you have in front of you if in the good parts, in the good moments, how it is, and but in the difficult moments, how, how you could react, if actually you can manage manage difficult situation with him, and I know like when you have the person of you which is a a truthful person, but like a real human being, which when he does a choice or when he does something, he doesn't do it for the the wrong purpose. He does it for the right person, what he thinks and what he's studying for. It could be in your interest or it could be against your interest or how you see it. But you know, like the person you have in front is the coach and he's trying to manage it in the best way, what he thinks is the best way. And at that moment, when you know like that guy is doing it and he doesn't want to hurt you and doesn't want to make uh, in, in, a, in a bad way, at that time when actually season was a little bit harder and when I wasn't, I wasn't feeling good for one or two months uh, and he had to make some, some choices. I had only, I had only the, 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 
the solution and had only the, the, the just to back him up and trying to help him as much to make to make things easier in everyday life in, in training and and trying to back him up with the team and trying to keep everyone in everyone everyone together and um, actually we 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 did it pretty well because we we passed that difficult moment which was uh, January February and from March we started to to come back a little bit we couldn't do it because we still could have finished in the top 10 with the last two games but uh, we definitely we definitely had some great moments in the bad moments we tried to manage in the best way but uh, I I I I I keep a great a great record of of Steve Bruce as a person and as a as a as a coach which has his his own way to see football and identity and he don't change it so I appreciate it a lot for that. Uh, we spoke about more already but another one of Steve Bruce's sort of first buys and definitely one of his favorite players is a, a man that's still at the club and is um is approaching 10 years now at Sunderland and, and Lee Catamore. Mm-hmm. Now Obviously, we've spoke about how you enjoyed about playing against him as a player, but there's sometimes, you know, there's people that l- right now people are liking Lee Catmore, but he's had a difficult few seasons at the club and there has sometimes been his character questioned, um, I think. But when Lee Catmore was younger and he was playing alongside you, who at the time was experienced but very similar, how was Lee Catmore's character both on the pitch and as a footballer? How did you find him? I was, I was Lee, of course, like spending time with Lee every day because we were training a lot and, and traveling for the games and to the hotels and, and everything. I was sharing a lot with Lee everything what was relating to football. Um, I was not talking a lot with him with extra football stuff like the way of life and how we see life and um because i think <laughs> we were absolutely not matching at all as persons outside of football but when we were like in football and everything what was the time we were spending together we were like in the same connecting a lot together and uh we were speaking a lot and sharing a lot when we, it came to football and that's why i think we were we were we were doing a great pair at that time because when it was time like the flow to be focused in 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 one way it was the pitch and 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 doing some simple and clear things which were at that time when we were playing together like nearly devastating for the opponent we were able to do we were able to do some some really 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 great stuff uh we were I think it's because like we 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 had like different different path different from different backgrounds like he had another career before coming to Sunderland I had completely another career before coming to Sunderland I was already playing international football I was playing Champions League or played national team um but I think I was matching a lot and I absolutely I was recognizing myself in a way like the way he was putting himself in the pitch like uh, an English Lorixana, but <laughs> but in a way like with less experience and less uh, background of how life is and how different football is when actually you are struggling with some difficult parts of your football trying to find some other solutions. And I think, I think Lee at, at that time was like having one solution on the pitch but um, we showed, I think, the time we played together with him, we showed to everyone, you can play with, uh, with that kind of midfield and actually you can, you can absolutely smash people with that kind of feeling. But everyone has to follow you. And I think we were trying to, to give the tempo of the team. We were playing in center mid and actually we were giving the tempo of the game me and and Lee and if we we didn't have that good connection between us it would have been possible was there any other players or or, or should I say who is the player that you enjoyed playing alongside most at Sunderland was there any player that you just thought it was a privilege to play alongside because we had a real talented team at that time oh yeah oh yeah absolutely well 
I had the chance. Like I, I came with Bolo Zenden. We were playing together in Marseille. So I didn't come. I didn't come on my own to Sunderland. And I had someone who has a great, a great career and a great experience. We already had played English football and important English football with Liverpool. And uh, it was very, very, very important to me. And for sure, I really enjoyed playing with him in Sunderland too. Um, uh, I had some. I really had a, a new impact and the way of seeing football. To be honest, the most, the biggest difference I felt when I came in Sunderland is the way, is the way we trained. Like I played some before to Sunderland. I played in Paris Saint Germain. I played yeah. Champions Champions League football in Marseille. and played Champions League football. For sure, we were very focused and in play, training and playing in high level. But when I came to Sunderland, like the guys sometimes were trying, sometimes playing, training harder than they were playing. It was very strange to me. Like guys, of course, it's good to train hard and thing. But the thing is, that when you come in the pitch on the on the Saturday, on the Sunday, you you have at least to play as hard as that and <laughs> as as good as that. And it was was a very English way to, to prepare the game and train and the, the tempo of the training was absolutely amazing. And uh, I enjoyed really playing to everyone in the team, uh, starting from uh, the French guy, Steve Malbronk, uh, for the first time hey, having, having like a uh, kind of um, f- strikers we had with Ken Wayne Jones, someone absolutely in a amazing power giving you the, the 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 possibility to play like really the way of football we were playing at that time like really 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 deep or this quick uh when we were like in difficult moments the game playing long bones he was able to handle it at that at that year we had like darren bent on fire like he was oh, wow. ab- absolutely different different level uh i enjoyed a lot Apart with Katz, I enjoyed all playing with Kieran Richardson, which was absolutely at that time very good conditions to play, being yeah. able to play left back, being able to play uh, uh, left wing, being able to play center mid, uh, fantastic left foot, very quick, very a fantastic player. I had the 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 chance and the luck, uh, and I think I was trying to to give the to be someone important for Jordan Anderson too. Like he was a very young lad. And uh, I remember saying to his parents, like if Jordan is keep keep working, keep, he's focused only on football and trying to give the best chance for him and himself, he could have a great career and being an, a very important part of the national team too back in 2010. And I think I wasn't wrong. No, and, not at all. And... Um, I was trying to help him a lot on the pitch and out the pitch, uh, and he he had some really a really a really good fit first season too. Um, great relation with um, great relation with Anton Ferdinand. Uh, uh, we had um, we had Da Silva. We had uh, the craziest guy I never I ever met in football, which was Phil Barsley. Um, <laughs> oh Bardo! <laughs> but but I was I was really I was really connected to Bardo. I had a great relation with Bardo, and we were we were staying outside together sometimes. And it was a it was a great guy. Not I think that's the kind of guy. If he had a little bit more luck and a little bit more of focus on football and being a little bit more serious on football, he could have could have done even a better career. But uh, yeah, I think he was a very 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 good left back, an amazing left back. A uh, right back, sorry, and he could um, play both, I suppose he, he, he he could have played ball, but he has he had that right right foot. He could yeah. have give uh, like 30, 30, 40, 50 meters ball. Amazing, amazing quality on the on his on his foot, and he was very tough. And I loved the, the, his his mentality, and I really had ex- enjoyed playing with him. Of course, as I said, Anton Ferdinand uh, with with Martin and still feel feel absolutely devastated when we when we heard it he disappeared and Craig Gordon I think we were we were pretty well saying I think we had the bad luck like have a lot of injury in the same time 
and we couldn't go after end of November. We couldn't go as as we had going to have the same performance as we had for the first three four months. Yeah, but uh, we I think we definitely give a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, of happiness and proud and and emotions to the Sunder fans that year. Oh, it was. I, I think that year was. You know, it, it was such a good start. You almost forget that kind of really poor middle bit that we had. But I remember the wins against Arsenal, the games against Liverpool, getting a point at Old Trafford. You, you know, we yeah. really did do well that year. And I think when you can look back in hindsight, I, I really agree with you and with Bolo. It was just a strength and depth thing. I think that's all it really was. I mean, Catamore was injured for a long time. You had a knee injury. I, I remember Kenwin getting injured. Steve yeah. Malbronk, as great as he was, never lasted past 60 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've mentioned a lot of good players, and, and you know you speak with a lot of um, passion about that time, and it's nice to hear, but how, how was the, the culture around the dressing room at the time? That, that must have been good as well, because although we had a tough time, you know, you need to have a good culture to have that kind of performances you can pull off were you surprised at how close net it was no of course you no know, everybody as i told you if you if you play in premier league and um you come from a season when when actually you were fighting for the relegation the the year before until the last game i think yeah um, something like that as i remember and uh, you you have a lot of new players coming in and a new coach you don't if you are not ready in every in every part of the of the project uh, players meaning um, uh, the way of playing and and trying to 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 get the best of the new players and and trying to put everything together and to come out with something with something which is which is which is good and we can perform in the good levels in the beginning uh, you're, na- you're not able to do, especially in the Premier League, because like teams are pre- very well prepared and, and and are very are very strong and very tough. Um, they are able to get best players from everywhere in the in the world. Um, I think the coach was pretty in his mind was pretty pretty clear what he was looking for and the way he wanted his team to play. Um, I think he couldn't he couldn't manage to have the same level of of performance of team for the the whole the the whole squad like for twenty twenty two players which is very important in the Premier League if you want to finish in the top ten and I think that's why we struggled at at one point uh, but the, the the team spirit inside was very good and I remember even for me it was not it was not easy like just to come in the first year like like landing in in Sunderland and then you have the t- the captain going leaving you have the the, the, the vice captain leaving and he, the coach has to make a choice and and he put me as a captain and it was like it was a weird feeling uh, i knew i i knew i i was able to do it but you know how you can how you how how your teammates can like can react some of them were already playing in the club they see yeah, you as a, cool. they they see you as a foreign player uh just come in the club uh you have to to gain their trust you have to gain their their confidence and i think i was just trying to show i can be someone leading them f- um by doing everything every day and by fighting and showing and trying to lead by the example on the pitch and 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 being pretty pretty calm and outside of the pitch and um, I think straight away I, I connected very well with the team but for sure it was it was not an easy time for for me neither because like uh see they were they you know when you have a team like most of the guys they know each other they, they speak with the, each other and they see you like who is that guy coming the first year not even in the in the in the in english football coming from outside and being and 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 getting the armband and i think it i gave a lot of importance I don't want to speak like too much outside. Let me speak on the pitch, and if they if they see it on the pitch, they will follow me. And I think I I I, 
I, I did that. But I think we, 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 we had a good relation in the team and I think that was important. I, I, I barely remember one part of the season, the, the guys fighting with each other, not even one or two times. It might have happened, but uh, in the past, in, in the former teams when I played, it always happened some very bad moments, like players like not shouting or fighting with each other. And I remember at that time in Sunderland, like we didn't have something like that, which showed like the team. Of course, nobody can love each other a lot or appreciate each other, but we were respecting each other and knowing like playing together, we were fighting. And, and I think that was the main strength of the team at that, at that time. Now, it's a bit I don't want to talk about, but I'm going to have to. Um, about you leaving the club, none of us were yep. really happy with that. I think, you know, as a fan base, you hear things, um, players say things, managers say things. And and the line was that you wanted to leave because you wanted to be closer to home. But um, I suppose my insight to this was, again, I was speaking to Bolo Zenden a, a month or so ago. Um, and he talked an awful lot about the lack of ambition within the football club and how that frustrated him, how he felt like being at Sunderland people were just happy to avoid relegation. Did you move solely for being back with your family or was there more to it than that? Well, I, I, I always say, I, I always said, and I always say what I have in my mind and it always show me that's the best way to do it. Because when you say what you have in, in your mind, you might be wrong or you might be right at that time, but at least people know what they expect from you. I mean, it, we are not here to say things that people want to hear. Yeah. We, we are here to say what we think and what we have in our heart and in our mind at that time. And it might be wrong, it might be good, but at least people know like when you say and when you stand for something, that's what you think. And uh, when I, at that time, when I was, uh, I finished my first season, um, and I always said to the people after, it might be my family, my friends, the press, and everyone, I always said, if at that time I was married, and if at that time I have a little bit more people around me in that part of the, uh, of the world, I would never have leave the club. Um, I had in my profession and my passion, which is football, I have everything was I was expecting for. I was still very young. I was the captain of the club in the Premier League, very proud to be and say, enjoying my football in back in time with I have in Marseille. Sunderland was the play the place when actually when I played every week, especially in the stadium of light, I was like enjoying every second I was spending on that pitch. But what was the private life? I was, it was very, 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 very tough, tough moment in my life. And uh, if I had my family with him, with my parents, and if I had, if I was married with kids, to be honest, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have leave, leave the club. And I was, I was missing something uh, with my with with my with my private life at that time, and uh, when I f I finished the first season uh, before before going in holiday, uh, I was completely like focused, knowing like we we're gonna have to keep going the project. I was expecting to do better in the second season because um, I was feeling I was feeling well. Um, I was the captain of the team. The team was very strong uh, economically, and I think uh, we knew like the the the, uh, the club's gonna get some new players, and we're gonna do at least as 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 good as we did in the first season. And I was I was preparing myself to come back, and I did come back, and that um, that offer came from from Galatasaray and. Um, um to be honest it's a place when where i always wanted to play one day uh i never thought i would have leave to to turkey 
uh, young because at that time I was still uh, 27. But um, I had a pretty good offer, giving me the possibility to, to play again European football, going a little bit closer to my family when they come and, and reach me uh, and, and, and spend some, a little bit more time with me. And giving me the possibility to play with that club, I was, I was always looking to play, maybe not that young. And I had to make the choice, and 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 I made the choice to 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 took that opportunity. Um, but for sure, it was not it was not easy and was not luck. But I took that I took that choice before coming back to to the club. And the first day when I when I step in the new season, uh, I went to see Steve Bruce and I said, Coach, um, I have this opportunity. This is the situation. And I want to go, and it was completely a choice of my side, and and absolutely unexpected from from the coach and from the and from the and club side. I remember it very well, since like it was yesterday. Do you have any regrets about leaving? Um, I don't know if it's a regret, but I definitely would would have loved to play more in English football, and especially yeah. I, I would have loved play more games in the in the stadium of light when you think of Sunderland as well um you know you speak very very fondly and I, I feel like a lot of players do and it's always so nice to hear as a just just as a fan of the club it's so nice to hear but there must be a moment when you think back in your head like when when we messaged you and asked if you, will you do this so if someone mentions to you about your time at, at Sunderland there must be a moment that you remember which is the moment that sticks out for you most with Sunderland? Kind of best moment, you mean? Yeah, that just if someone says to you, you know, Sunderland Association Football Club, how was your time there? What, what's <laughs> the first memory that goes in your head? Mm, many of them, to be honest. Yeah, many of them, to be honest. I uh, in every in every in every in every part of life, in every part of my experience. Uh, the first, the first welcome in Celtic Park in Glasgow was absolutely unbelievable. Like some people that never, they never say, saw me playing before, they might have been seeing me in Champions League with Marseille. Mm -hmm. Going just to warm up, it was absolutely something, something else. Um, when uh, I played that that first game with the club in. The first game of the season in Bolton, when we had more than five thousand Sunderland fans coming, I was one of them. Yep, <laughs> was absolutely something. I said that that's, and it's not because it's English football. Not every English football team has five thousand away fans coming to the game, and I was feeling we were playing at home. Seriously, <laughs> and. Uh, the first game against Chelsea at home, even we were leading 1-0 first half. Yeah. I remember it very well. Um, I, I broke my hand that day. Um, it, was, uh, it was absolutely amazing with the connection with people uh, after the game, before the game. It was the first time for us, for me, like we, are, uh, we were not used to like the game started at three o'clock, coming to the stadium at one fifteen. I remember coming to the stadium of flight and walking through from the parking to the to the to the chain to the entrance in the stadium. Like everybody coming coming before the game, approaching you, say saying some great stuff, saying some good words, making you feel warm and and strong. And after the game and um, walking walking in the walking walking around and. Uh, I didn't. I didn't spend so much time in in the city of Sunderland. Uh, I was. Uh, I stayed. I stayed uh, in the beginning. The first month, I stayed in Durham. Uh, I was. I was spending some times in the coast, uh, in the seaside, and I remember people always having a good word for you. Always having appreciating appreciating what how the way you play and what you how you fight for the team and i think it it's the whole experience with the people i really enjoyed it a lot and 
of course, as a football player, the game, the pitch, but the relation with the Sunderland fans and, and the people of Sunderland made the experience absolutely fantastic. So final question, how would you describe your time at Sunderland in three words? <laughs> <laughs> I don't make them easy, you know. <laughs> well, let, let me think a little bit about it. Um, That's fine. No, I don't have to think about how to describe it because the thing, mm-hmm. the, f- the first thing comes in my mind. Uh, it's for sure uh, passion. Yeah. Uh, identity. Yeah. And. And love for sure. It might be it might be how to describe most of the clubs because if you ask some clubs how you would describe it, it it's gonna be the same. It might be the same three words. But in Sunderland, with this, with the experience in Sunderland, with the people of Sunderland, it makes it even easier to respond. To be honest, I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying. Yeah, no, for sure. It does. And I, I mean, it's easy for me to say as a fan and many people listening will probably agree. But um, no, I, I do understand exactly what you're saying. But when are you coming back? When are you coming back to sit in with the fans then? Oh, I would love to. I would yes. love to. And I, um, for the last, uh, since I retired, because before that it was very difficult, like with the, with the games you had and things. Yeah, when, of course. For the last, for the last two years, I trying. I tried to plan a trip to the northeast and come to see the club. Uh, I, it didn't match so well with actually the last performance of the of the of the club, and we. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm. I was absolutely, uh, let's say, not going too too hard, but I was absolutely very really sad seeing the yeah. club like going down two divisions in two years. But uh, I think. More than ever, it might be it might be the best time to come back a little bit and see and see. Of course, I would I would love to come back in 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 Sunderland playing a derby a derby against Newcastle in the Premier League. But I think it might be even better and more important for me coming back and seeing the the club and the team and the people uh, when they are we are playing in League One. So. Uh, I will make I will make one promise. Like by end of this uh, by end of this year, maybe uh, around March March or April, I will I will come in the stadium and see uh, see a home a home game. I would love to. Well, there's always a seat for you, Lorik. I'm sure everyone would agree with me on that. Not one person would be against you coming back. So, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who is working on the club and uh, is, who is still working on the club. But I will. I will definitely send an email and and tell them when I will come and if they can if they can keep two seats for me and and a friend of mine. And for sure, I will. I will come and trying to 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 support the team as as much as I can. <laughs> well, if 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 they can't, we will. All right, we, we'll, we'll try and find a couple of spare seats somewhere. I'm sure someone will give up their seats for you if we're, if we're sold out, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. But, um, no problem. Thanks, um, thanks so much for doing it, Lorik, because um, you're somebody that, you know, me, myself, and, and a lot of fans as well really admired, obviously, when you played for Sunderland. It's um, when somebody gets it, if, if you know what I mean, the way you did, it's very, very easy to to connect with that player and it's been really really nice for me as a fan chatting and I'm, I'm really hopeful that everyone that listens to this podcast feels exactly the same way and I'm sure they will because people were you know evidently excited that we were getting you on but um but there you go I, I enjoyed it do you have fun oh yeah well, it was really good it was as I told you it's a it's, a, it's my first uh, it's my first opportunity I'm used to I'm used to to speak to the media and to the press, but uh, it's my first opportunity to speak with uh, with uh, with someone which is a uh, can can speak with um, for the in the name of the fans and and and, and related and and connected to the fans of Sunderland and 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 I enjoyed very much and 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 I hope I I try I try to share I try to share uh, my my experience I try to share my feelings and. And then, uh, and I really enjoyed it. So I hope to come and see you and see you very soon. I planned it for the last two years, but uh, I definitely have to come 
as I gave my award by by end of this year. And, and, and it's recorded. And it's recorded now as well, you know. It, and I've got your number, so I can bug you to come. <laughs> done. <laughs> done. Done indeed. Well, you enjoy you enjoy your sleep because I believe it's quite late in Albania just now, maybe like two o'clock in the morning, maybe. Yeah, nearly, yeah. You look after yourself. Thanks so much for, Thank for you. coming on. And I'll see you in March. <laughs> okay. No problem. Looking forward to it. How much fun was that? Lorixana, eh? I hope I covered everything you wanted to hear. I hope you liked all of his answers. I certainly did. What a great guy. And yeah, you know, it's it's totally understandable why Lorixana connected with Sunland Association Football Club and its fans. He really did wear his heart on his sleeve. He really did get stuck in. He really did give what he had for Sunland Football Club and he had a bit of quality with it as well. If you enjoyed it, let us know. Let me know because I don't mind doing this again. If if this is how you prefer the interviews, we'll get a, a typed up version of this and no doubt it'll be in the program as well. But um, thanks for listening. It's nice to be part of what's been a, a really good batch of interviews from Rook Report as a whole. Something that I've been really proud to add to with this interview. Um, yeah, thanks for checking in as always. My name's Graham. This has been the Rook Report Extra Extra podcast with Lark Sana. Speak to you soon.